In this video we reveal three of the scariest stories ever told on YouTube. Starting with the really creepy Ouija board story. One night a few friends were playing around with a Ouija board one night in high school. This is their story. We had tried using Ouija boards before, but without any actual results. Usually, we did it to just to try and scare each other. We all believed it to be a joke. Only the seven of us were home that evening, and we were gathered around the board as a group. One of the women there wanted to give it a try first. She had never used a Ouija board before. It was a different Ouija board to say the least. Some of the words on the board were consistently misspelled in the same way. It provided responses that appeared to be quite historically relevant for our community. The ghost claimed to be a 10-year-old kid who died on the land in the 1800s and was also interred there in an unmarked cemetery. My one friend's house was on a farm in the edge of town, where we were. The board had never been so specific before, so we were all a bit freaked out. We were all, however, still skeptical and believed that one of us was attempting to frighten the others. My girlfriend then pleaded with the spirit to do something to demonstrate his presence to us. After going to yes, it spelt out knock. The planchette then came to a stop. We were all just gazing at it in silence when we heard a knock. 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 On the window, directly next to us. There was no one around, everyone was gone until the next day. It was just us, and the Ouija board, and the spirit of a 10-year-old boy, so it said. We all looked back at the window in horror, and it knocked three times again as we all watched. We were petrified. We used the Ouija board as a joke in the past, but this time it wasn't a joke. The window continued to knock louder and louder until it started shaking the whole wall. We all ran upstairs and the lights started flickering on and off. My friend then screamed for the spirit to leave us alone, and the noises stopped. Since that night, we all agreed to never use the Ouija board again after that. The next story, is about a haunted rest stop that couldn't be found on a map. Here is their personal story. When I was 16 and my sister was 20, my mom and us were driving across the country. Even though it was late, we were still rested and awake. We pulled over at the first rest area in 200 miles as we were traveling along a highway and realized we needed gas and a break. In addition to a van full of adolescents on a road trip, there were two young men standing still, outside of a little gray car. That was parked in front of us at the gas station's pump. When we arrived, everything seemed off. We had been traveling for days, and had passed by numerous rest spots at night without once feeling threatened. I stayed in the car while my mother and sister went inside. The teenagers fled quickly after claiming to be frightened and unable to get the pump to function. The two males had not moved at all, as I was looking at the car in front of us. Zero inches. They were not conversing. Their phones were off. They were motionless, simply standing there. The two men turned to stare at us slowly while without moving or turning the rest of their bodies. And I swear to God, we all noticed the same thing. They had eyes as dark as night and were hollow. My sister and mother sprinted back out to the car to meet them. Their eyes were actually empty. Nothing but a void, not dark, not reflecting any light at all. We left quickly and didn't stop till we reached the following city. What was the worst part of the whole experience? Any map we looked at didn't show the location. We knew exactly where to look on the highway, but neither Google Maps nor any of our printed maps could help us locate it. Even when we asked the locals about the Erie gas station that was off to the side of the road, we just got blank stares in return. Since then, we have driven on the same interstate in the same area, and could not find that place. So what was this place? A parallel dimension? A ghost town that pops in and out of space? Freaky nonetheless, which leads us to the last scary story. 
someone had picked up a friend that was supposed to be dead? Here is the real life story. I attended my high school reunion when I was 37 years old. I took a flight to the closest airport and leased a rental car. It took about 35 miles to get there, through an area of the country that was incredibly rural, and all but deserted. I noticed someone flagging me down on the side of the road, about three miles outside of town. It turned out to be one of the guys from my old school. We begin conversing after Dan, not his real name, entered the vehicle. He appeared almost the same age as when I seen him last, even though it had been nearly 20 years. I was confused but he seemed in a good mood so we continued on. As soon as we arrive in town, I invite him to the VFW for a drink. No, just take me home, he responds. I turned in the direction of where Dan's parents had once lived, just a few blocks away from my grandmother's home. But he had instructed me to take him outside of town instead. There was a park of mobile homes there, so I assumed that was where he lived. He said, when we got to the end of the turnoff, please leave me here. It was nice to see you once more. And he leaves into the darkness on foot. Once more? I was very confused when he said that. I visit the VFW and stared chatting with some of my former classmates. I told them that I just picked Dan up and left him three miles east of town. Everyone went completely silent, and the karaoke singer also stopped and put down the microphone. My cousin's face turned completely white. He said Barb, Dan passed away eight years ago on that bend. He crashed his car there one night. All of us attended his burial. I stepped outside to my car to take a few deep breaths, and I felt very lightheaded. The local newspaper with Dan's obituary from eight years ago, was sitting there on the seat. I still have that paper to this day. What do you think of these three stories? Which one is your favorite? Don't forget to share these stories with your friends, and we'll see you next time.